Imagine Eternia. Eternia. Imagine the gate of fangs. Eternia. Batteries not included. Imagine the soaring sky tracks. Figure so separately. The cavern of justice. Eternia. Imagine the power lift to the control chamber. At last, from the masters of the universe, the world you've always imagined can be yours. <laughs> Without a doubt, the biggest and most impressive playset from Mattel's He-Man line was the Internia playset released in 1986. However, size doesn't always matter. It looks fun, and again, it was impressive to see, but did it pack in the fun play value of the smaller playsets like Castle Grayskull and Snake Mountain? Well, that would be best answered by a kid back in 1986 who had it. On a personal note, it just seemed a little too big to be all that fun as the smaller playsets would give you a more controlled space to center the fun. But fun or not, this thing was impressive and one of the best designed toys of the 80s. Sadly, what I hurt this playset the most, I think was releasing it in 1986, as it was the first year He-Man was starting to see a decline in sales. By the end of 1984, Mattel said they sold a little over 70 million action figures from the He-Man Master Universe line. In 1986, Mattel would still make about $40 million in sales from the He-Man line. But the following year, in 1987, the line crashed to $7 million. If this playset was released at the hype of He-Man, let's say 1983, 1984, maybe into 1985, it probably would have sold a lot better. What caused the toy line to crash almost overnight? Well, it wasn't She-Ra, and I've done a whole video on why we crashed, so I'll link to it at the end of this video. With sales still strong, but down in 1996, Mattel knew they had to give kids something new and exciting to play with and beg for at Christmas time. What better playset to make than Eternia, the home world of He-Man, his friends, and parents? This is a playset the kids playing with the toys in 1983 would talk about and always wanted, but kind of knew in the back of their head there's no way a toy company could make a planet playset. Well, Mattel wanted to make the kids dreaming of that playset come true. And they got the help of Mike McCritchard, one of the Master Universe designers and engineers, to help bring the city playset to life. Mike had already had huge success with the He-Man line. In fact, he gave He-Man his Thunder Punch action. And he also made Spider-Door, among a lot of other toys for the line. But this was no action figure. And it wasn't just a normal playset. This thing was going to have to be huge, and more importantly, fun. Mike would lead up the project with Mattel assigning him two other engineers to help. Mattel wanted the biggest Master Universe playset ever and wanted Mike and his team to come up with it and they sure did deliver. The playset would mostly be three huge towers that would connect by a monorail track with a mechanical vehicle attached that would circle the city playset. There was even plans to let kids attach the Castle Grayskull and Snake Mountain to the playset to make the playset tower town more of a huge planet playset. Well, how much would this huge thing cost to make? Mike said the number was through the roof. And after the first design, Mattel stepped in and cut out 20 intended functions for the playset. But they would also add a handful more play features that was fun that wasn't included with the first design. Even with cuts and changes, the playset itself was the highest bill for a single toy for Mattel ever. At first, Mattel estimated that they would have to sell around 40 thousands of the playset just to break even and it would take 60,000 of them to make a profit. However, after reworking the plans and coming up with a final design, that estimate dropped, with the company believing they only would have to sell 20,000 to make a profit. That does sound better, but Mattel would only produce 4,000 of them, making it impossible to reach its 20,000 goal. The playset was released in 1986, with a suggested retail price of $140. That today equals to about $400. Some of the popular catalog companies at the time would mark it down to around $100, knowing that most parents picking up this playset would buy some figures to go along with it. Overall, it's clear Mattel didn't make money on the playset. It seems their biggest goal was to get kids who were slowly moving out of He-Man toys back into toys just a little longer. Today, you can pick up one of these playsets loose for around $2,000. Even the instruction book that comes along with the playset can run you close to $100. And what about one still in a box that's never been opened? That's getting closer and closer each year to $10,000. If you want one, but you only have a few hundred dollars, well, it looks like Mattel is looking for backers so they can release a new version of the playset. And that asking price? $550.
which I know is a high price. But when you think back to 1986 and this suggested retail price was 140 and that that 140 now equals about 400 today, take that into consideration. And the rising cost of everything this year, I'm shocked they're not asking seven to eight hundred dollars. Either way, old or new, it's too pricey for me. But this was a look at one of the most impressive playsets of the 80s. Did you have this playset? Did you enjoy playing with it as a kid? As for me, the smaller ones do look more fun. And honestly, I wouldn't even know where I would put this thing if I had it as a kid. It's bigger than my room. Well, I want to thank you for watching. And as always, thumb up so you like my content. Subscribe to the channel. We'll talk again soon. Hey, Jumpman <laughs> channel popping, though. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony.